So let's dive a little bit into um, the other thing that you've mentioned in your book is how to prioritize in high growth organizations. So yeah. you're growing and then you go, my God, it's just overwhelming. What, who do I, where, what are my priorities? So how, how do you manage that? It's <laughs> like, oh, do I you know, hire someone to sell because I'm doing the selling, I don't want to do it anymore. That can turn a disaster. Or, or do I need someone that can launch a project for me, but I need to give them a plan. Um, you might find that I need your, your tech suffering. You maybe outsource that, but now it's time to hire a, a, a head tech guy that maybe can code, but he also can manage a team. So how do you prioritize when you've got all this noise? Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, the uh, clearest, most succinct answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends what's important for your organization at yeah. that moment. Is it, is it product, engineering, sales, you know, what, what have you? It depends. Um, so the framework that I talk, what's that context? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And heck, if I were to give you a straight answer on that, you know, I, I would hope that you would, you know, throw, throw a red flag and, and say, wh why you're trying to sell me something. It depends. It really does depend. Um, but the framework that you can approach that problem with is what's most important right now. What are my few critical priorities? I want to hire player coaches that can help me build this specialty function, uh, some specialists, um, people that I can trust that I don't need to uh, look over their shoulder all the time. So rounding up in terms of your capability expectations, that's really important. I, I tend to see a gravitation towards um, existing personal relationships or referral from a friend yeah. and and that'll, that'll get you to a certain point, but um, then you really need the, the real depth of experience that you probably need to search for um, in the broader market. Uh, friends and family recruiting will probably only take you to 25 or so employees until it gets pretty thin or pretty remote. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so thinking about that player coach profile is, is really important. I also talk a little bit about spans and layers. Um, which uh, w without, without a whiteboard to draw it out on, I'll try to do it verbally. Yeah, th it's the idea of how many direct reports is it realistic for somebody to manage? Mm -hmm. um, and, and how many uh, layers are there from the CEO or leader of the company to the front line? So how many managers, managing managers, managing managers might you have? Mm -hmm. And every one of those layers creates an opportunity for a major communication gap from misalignment, mm -hmm. um, their distance is created with every layer. So um, I, I've seen some organizations st stack managers on top of each other, one on top of one, because they're trying to recruit somebody. And so they make it a managerial role. I've seen other organizations crow so proudly, we're a flat organization. Well, what that means is your CEO has 29 direct reports mm -hmm. and is paying no attention to any of them. Um, or you have some sort of informal hierarchy that's developed that your leadership isn't really in control of. Mm. So just keeping an eye on spans and layers and once again, applying critical thinking where if you have a group of inside salespeople that are doing similar work under one roof with very clear and objective uh, metrics and objectives, you can probably manage quite a few of them. You know, call it 12, 15, maybe even 20. Um, but if you have one person doing finance in Bangalore and somebody doing marketing in Vancouver and somebody else who is doing a very technical, you know, software engineering role in Austin, Texas, and they're all over the world in different time zones in very different types of roles, you probably can't manage as many of them. So that might be four or five or six. And so apply that to a CEO who manages different disciplines versus a department head or a team leader. And so just think about your spans and layers and try to make, uh, try to make your growth make sense uh, yeah. as you fill out your organization. So th those, are a few, those are a few key tips. And you know, back to prioritization, you can move 30 things an inch or you can move three things a mile Mm -hmm. And in startup land where you're typically burning cash, um, you, you need to move fast. And so that means make pro 
identify what those few key priorities are, other stuff will get done. Mm. But it's it's like the big rocks concept from Franklin Covey. You identify those big rocks and that all the little pebbles and the gravels can fill in around it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.